basically in my mindset i was like you know what when i get there it's over for you guys there's going to be nothing that's holding me back i'm going to be thriving <laughs> waking up in the morning thinking of so many things i just wish things would get better but nothing seems to say the same <sighs> hey guys it's me selene and i'm back and it's been a while last year i spent my 23rd birthday abroad it was the first time I'd had a birthday where I was happy since losing my father in 2018. And although I did have a lot of fun, I was mentally at my lowest. While everyone around me is settling into their jobs, starting businesses and families, even traveling around the world, I spent most of my time in my comfort zone, afraid of failing after having gone through a difficult few years. I was missing everyone from home, I had fallen out of love with my passion and had no idea what to do on most days. I was on an autopilot of eat, sleep, cry, repeat. I felt like I was letting my 20s go by. But being alone in my contemplative state were lessons that I learned while wasting my early 20s. And it made me realize it might not have been such a waste after all. So if you're going through your early 20s with the same doubts and the same conundrums, I hope these lessons and revelations affirm that you're gonna be okay. We hear from our peers all the time that our 20s are supposed to be the best decade of our lives. And while I don't take my youth for granted, it also weighs like an anchor around my neck. There are so many misconceptions and expectations surrounding our 20s. That girl aesthetic, hustle culture, the young and well-traveled entrepreneur, <laughs> the list goes on. We're expected to have all the fun, whether it's abroad, alone, with our friends, or at school, and essentially get our lives together all at the same time. When in reality, I know so many amazing individuals in their 20s who are anxious, alone, and doubt-ridden. Personally, my 20s are a big fat question mark, but it is also a period of unlearning bad habits and learning new ones that allow me to make space for the person I want to become. So rather than resisting these changes, I just went with it. I learned that it's okay to rediscover everything all over again. And this brings me to my next lesson. Growing up, I saw the world through a black and white lens. Whether it was politics, mental health, or philosophy, it was easier for me to take a stance on things based on what I felt was right and wrong. But as I grew older, I noticed my opinions started to morph into something less obsolete. I started to see the gray areas. I observed more before I came to a stance. And it made me panic because I thought having an evolvement of opinion meant I wasn't a good person or that I was disingenuous. While I don't think evolving is an uncommon occurrence as we mature, I think it made me see how easy it was to emotionally attach yourself to opinions and thoughts. But it simply doesn't define your identity. And it's okay to let it grow into something else entirely so long as the intentions stay true. Even my revelations in this video may change in a couple of years. I remember it was maybe five years ago when the word self-love became the newest thing. And my younger self thought she was slick and found a loophole to hide behind self-validation to justify anything. Whether it was throwing a tantrum, overspending, making someone feel bad about themselves, or even something as trivial as procrastinating. I'll be honest, I was a very argumentative person growing up, and I've come a long way, but I see now in hindsight how it pushed a lot of people away from me in my adolescent years. It also made me realize that as you grow older, no family member or friend will consistently have the time to hold you accountable. So it is vital to keep ourselves in check when necessary so long as we're aware of the difference between being responsible versus being too hard on ourselves. 
We centralize ourselves and our feelings so much that it can hinder us. And though we're only human and it's absolutely okay for us to take a break or stand our ground, when we let our validations become self indulgent, we forget about our own accountabilities. So own up. It's okay to make those mistakes. You're here to grow, you're here to learn. I was a very ambitious girl growing up. Whenever I was sad or frustrated at something, I'd resort to planning. I plan my day, my future, my career, even my wedding. Planning a promising outcome in my near future when I was struggling in my present gave me a lot of comfort. But that form of escapism quickly turned into a bad habit of constantly needing control of every situation in my life. At 19, I was humbled by the universe when I lost my father and felt a strong sense of hopelessness. I thought that the life that I had planned for myself was completely ruined because there was one less person in my picture-perfect successful life. And it made me spiral into a deep depression that triggered my hypothyroidism and even caused me to feel suicidal. I felt like I failed at life, and my fight response to that was more perfectionism. I held on to the expectations of myself so tightly that I made life more difficult for myself. There's a saying that goes, perfectionism is procrastination manifested. And I found that to be beautiful and profound because our fear of giving up control slows us down from our inevitable growth. The more you obsess over making things perfect, the more you waste time. You lose time to be present for the invaluable lessons. You lose time to truly enjoy the process for what it is. Change your reaction to failure and difficulty. Instead of frustration, laugh it off. Take a step back or even vent and go at it again. You might surprise yourself and have a lot of fun while doing it. Okay, I know I might get a lot of flack for this, but I'll say it anyways. I stumbled upon a YouTube short of Andrew Tate a while ago, and though I disagree with a lot of things he says and does, this one struck a chord with me. To sum it all up, he talked about how our passions can be fleeting because our motivations can suffer from dips and spikes. He also did a comparison of motivation versus discipline. Of course, I'm aware this may not apply to everybody because there are several people out there whose passions bring them stability and fulfillment. And that's beautiful. But I personally thought I was going to pursue a career in the arts. I was going to be a big star until I no longer wanted to. And I questioned the longevity of the stability it could bring me. Should I risk the burnout of pursuing a passion that may or may not propel me to where I want to be in life? Should I stick it through and see what happens? Should I just change careers? These questions cause me to have multiple existential crisis breakdowns. Like this. And this. And this. I feel where I went wrong was I blindly pursued my passion through rose-colored glasses, even when I started having doubts. So I sat down and got honest with myself. I wrote down what I wanted to prioritize now. And it made me realize that your passion doesn't always have to be at the front seat of your career. It's totally normal to lose passion for something, even if it's temporary or permanent. If your focus is your passion, pursue it honestly and be unashamed of it. And if you choose to prioritize stability, that's okay too. But be sure to incorporate your passion in your everyday job or in your free time. We owe it to ourselves to create a balance that caters to our priorities. Love isn't like having butterflies. Love is comfortable. Love is calm. That's what I imagine self-love to be like. This rise in self-esteem and self-love craze comes from wanting to be loved whether it's by others or yourself. At the end of the day, I truly believe we're all just trying to be the most lovable versions of ourselves. But it's really hard to decipher what self-love means when society and media often present a narrative that is romanticized. I always thought that self-love meant doing things that made you happy. 
but I quickly realized the version of self-love I subscribed to was just a shallow chase of quick dopamine fixes. Self-love doesn't require a grand gesture to reinstate yourself. I believe true self-love comes from the littlest things. Giving yourself a daily routine, taking a walk, sleeping in after a long night. But self-love can also be as confronting as going for therapy or doing shadow work where you acknowledge and accept the parts you suppress or hide. If our 20s are about reconstruction, then there's no way it can be perfect. They're not meant to be perfect. I believe the 20s can be intimidating to get into because of the pressure to attain success as fast as you can. That's a lot to expect out of yourself. Your 20s are where you start to make decisions for yourself. And you will make the wrong ones. But you'll also make the right ones. You will learn to bounce back quicker, to persevere, and to learn what you want and don't want out of life. Most importantly, with every passing year, you will start to find your place in the world. So be brave and go find out where that will be.